Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Welcome everyone to Amazed by the Qur'an, a series in which I like talking to you about, you guessed it, what I find amazing about the Qur'an. Today I'm going to compare two ayat with you. Uh, those ayat, one belongs to Surah Al-Baqarah and the other belongs to Surah Ali Imran. Again, very, very similar ayat. Let me read them off to you so you appreciate what's going on here. Al-Haqqu min Rabbik, the truth comes from your, Rab, from your master. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ Don't you dare become among those who fall into doubt. The other, الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكْ The truth comes from your master. فَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ Don't become from those who fall into doubt. So one says, don't you dare fall into doubt. And the other says, don't fall into doubt. Seems like in one, there's a higher likelihood of doubt. There's a greater threat of doubt. And so the Prophet is being told, don't you dare fall into doubt. By the way, let me talk to you a little bit about the word doubt here. The Qur'an uses raib for doubt, shak for doubt, midya for doubt, okay? Maraj for doubt. So we're going to use the word midya here because the word is mumtareen in the ayah. Let me explain what that particular word means. It means that you have a position that you're convinced of, but through somebody's counter arguments and somebody's um, attacks on your position, your foundation, your core foundation is starting to shake and you're starting to doubt yourself. Okay? That kind of a doubt is called a midya. So don't become of those who loses their foundation and starts doubting the, you know, the basis on which they believe. Okay? That's what the Prophet is being told. Now what is the comparison between these two? Baqarah, the ayah, actually belongs to the passage where the, uh, the, the direction of Muslim prayer changed from Jerusalem to Kaaba, to Makkah. And when that direction changed, the scholarly members of the Jewish community critiqued the Muslims about how that's ridiculous how Makkah has no sacred value. Historically, the sacred house is Jerusalem. And of course, they're scholars. The Prophet ﷺ is an ummi. The Prophet is an unlettered prophet. And these are people that are just literally described in the Quran as ahbar, scholars of ink. Like their hands are always dirty with ink because they're writing so much all the time. These are PhDs and then some. That's what they are. And they're telling you, you don't know what you're talking about. Now when an academic, uh, someone with a lot of intellectual promise, Credentials. When they tell you you don't know what you're talking about, it can mess you up. A high school student gets into college, goes to a PhD in philosophy, who's teaching philosophy 101, he's going to be intimidated by his academic credentials. He's going to feel like this person, after studying all that much, must know more, must be right. I mean, how can they be wrong? They're an expert after all. You see what I'm saying? So the context here is because the criticism is coming from those who have very, academic, very high academic credentials, you are in a chance, you have a chance of becoming intimidated. And that intimidation can make you question yourself. Don't. Truth comes from your master. Don't become from those who fall into doubt. You know, after all, the historical integrity of the Kaaba is, is a historical debate. It's something that requires a lot of research. When Allah says that first house built for the worship of Allah for humanity was at the location of Mecca or Bakka, that's something that requires a lot of historical digging. And something obviously the Jewish and Christian scholarship is not easily going to accept. It's not something they're just going to take and say, oh yeah, of course. No, 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 it's not going to be like that. And Muslim scholars, by the way, on that subject have done amazing work that needs to get translated because they've actually done research from the Bible that shows that it's Makkah. You know, from Torah, from the Hebrew Bible that has shown that it's Makkah. Inshallah, one day we'll get to that. But on the other hand, Allah is talking to, the, the, the Prophet is talking to the Christian community that came from Najran, that's in Ali Imran. And they're talking about how Jesus is the Son of God. This is not an academic complexity. Truth is from your Lord. Don't be in doubt. There's no, don't you dare fall into doubt. There's no threat here. Just don't be doubtful. They might come up with some philosophical arguments justifying, you know, their, their faith. But there's, no, there's nothing big here. There's no real threat here. Nothing to be intimidated by here. Just stick to the truth. To stick with the truth. So when you're being, you know, the lesson drawn for you and me, of course, is that there are two kinds of doubt. There's emotional doubt and there's intellectual doubt. Emotional doubt is the doubt, the kind of doubt that was attempted by the, Jew, the, the Christian community. Out of love of God, out of the want of salvation, wouldn't you want to have a guarantee? Wouldn't you just want to be saved? You know? And then through that, and by the way, when people are not feeling love in the Muslim community, when they don't feel love, and then they go to the Christian community and they feel loved, then it makes them start doubting Islam. And you, you think there's an intellectual problem and you start arguing three is not one, one is not three, look at their Bible, look at how much it's changed and all this. You're making intellectual arguments, but their doubt isn't intellectual. 
Their doubt is emotional. Their doubt is, if those people are wrong, why are they so kind and nice? And if we're truthful, why are we so mean and insensitive? That's, that's the doubt. But the, the academic doubt is a different animal altogether. The academic doubt is about making arguments that are, you know, they sound so elaborate with all these terminologies and all these books and papers and research and all this stuff that looks so staggering and intimidating that you say, man, I don't know if I can believe what I believe anymore because there's a lot of PhDs done on how he's not a prophet. You know, that's intellectual doubt. Of course, the Muslims are supposed to fight both doubt. Allah did not dismiss one doubt or the other. The academic doubt came from the, the attack of academic doubt came from the, the Jewish community, the Jewish scholarship. The emotional doubt was brought forward by the Christian community. And Allah acknowledged both of them. He did acknowledge that the academic is more dangerous. He did. And by the way, let me tell you why now the emotional is less dangerous. I'll tell you why. The Prophet ﷺ is not a scholar. He didn't study in a seminary. He doesn't have a PhD. He's not an academic. He's not writing books. So they do have, in that sense, what they might think is an upper hand, yes? But with the Christians, what they have is love. What they have is softness. What they have is character. What they have is kindness, compassion, mercy. The Prophet has that more than anybody ever did. So it can't, you, you can't mess with the Prophet when it comes to that. <laughs> we have a problem because we've lo lost that beautiful trait of the Prophet So we're being attacked from both kinds of doubt. And that's why the second doubt is not as big of a threat in, this, in these ayats because what they have to offer in terms of softness and kindness and love and mercy more than they've ever experienced is already there in the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's already there. May Allah azza wa jal make us a people free from doubt of all kinds. And may Allah azza wa jal help us understand what, what remarkable lessons of transformation Allah is teaching us through these powerful ayat. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.